Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I've got a Tyrannus in my hands and everyone loves the Tyrannus and they still can't make enough of them to keep them on the shelves because they're such a wonderful radio. You've seen, I've done a couple of videos already on the FreeSky Tyrannus and today I'm gonna to look at something that is quite important if you've got one of these is transmitter batteries. What are you gonna to use to power this thing? Now it does come with a battery, but there are other options and let's look at those options and why you might choose one over another. So here's a Tyrannus. Let's have a look at what you get if you buy one off the shelf. What do you get in the back? What, what battery do they provide? And here it is. I mean, really? I mean, it's an 800 milliampere hour nickel metal hydride battery. And based on my own experience with the battery, it's not even a low self discharge. So if you charge this up and you come back a couple of weeks later, it's going to be, you know, already substantially discharged. You won't get that much flying time. It's only 800 milliampere hours. That's not really enough for today's situation where people like to be able to grab their transmitter and go flying for perhaps a whole day without recharging it. Back in the days of long why, it was, you know, you'd get about an hour and a half out of a battery. This is probably going to give you two or three hours, but hey, on a good day, who only wants to fly for two or three hours, you know? So this has to go in my opinion. So what are the options? What other batteries can you put in the Tyrannus? Well, here's a little bit of an array of what you could choose from. Let's put them in an order here. Now this is the, the Hobby King 12, what is it? 1500 milliampere hour lithium iron phosphate, LIFE. I've used these batteries quite a bit. They're not bad, they, you know, for the money, it's pretty hard to beat them. The problem with them is they can puff up over time. I've had a few go puffy on me. This one's pretty solid, but sometimes they'll puff for no apparent reason. They come with an array of connectors here. Now they are a three cell LIFE, which makes them 9.9 .9 volts. This is 7.2 volts, the original. It's 9.9, .9, so it's a little bit more voltage, but it doesn't really matter. The Tyrannus can handle that no problems at all. So it is nearly twice the capacity of the standard Tyrannus battery. And in fact, it's actually more than that because it's a higher voltage as well. You're getting over twice the capacity, twice the, the, the actual times out of this battery as you'll get out of that one. And being lithium ion phosphate, you can leave it for two or three weeks or a month or even two months, and it won't have self-discharged. When you go to use your radio, if you charge the battery before you put it away, you can just take it out and use it. Don't have to recharge it to top it up. Then there's the Zippy LIFE batteries. These also are pretty good and they're a little bit bigger than the, um, you see, a bit bigger than the, the, the Hobby King ones because they're 1800 milliampere hours. Now that's a whole thousand milliampere hours more than the stock battery. And because it's a, again, a 9.9 .9 volt battery, three cell, it's actually in terms of capacity, in terms of watt hours, which is the total amount of energy these batteries store, it's quite significantly more than this. You know, it's uh, maybe even, what are we looking at, 838, maybe even not quite three times the capacity. So that's great. These work really well. I've noticed that they vary a bit in size. Some of them, I've had a couple that were just a really tight fit, some fit quite easily. Then of course you've got LiPo batteries. A lot of people use LiPos in their transmitters. I'm not so fussed on LiPos. Um, they do puff easily and you know, the more of a fire risk. As you'll see in my channel, I've compared the fire risk of, of LIFEs. I've, I've tried to make one of these go bang, compared it to LiPo, and these are a much safer battery. They're much less inclined to act as a fire starter. So, you know, if you're going to stick your transmitter away in the in the wardrobe during the winter, then you don't really want one of these in it if you can avoid it, because who knows what will happen. But there you go, that's an option. These are cheap too. And this is a three cell one. But with the Tyrannus, um, this, well, this will produce 11.1 .1 volts nominal, 12.6 when fully charged, which is quite a bit more than the 7.2 in there. And I'll discuss what that means in a moment. Of course, there's also the two cell LiPo option. This is just one I had laying around, not the one I would use, but there's a two cell LiPo option, which is uh, 8.4 volts when fully charged. So it's it's around about the same voltage as the standard NIMH pack. Also, the benefit of a two cell pack is the connector on the standard battery and where you plug your battery into on the Tyrannus, it's a like a balance connector. So you can actually just plug in the two cell LiPo using the same connector. You don't have to do any wiring that comes with this connector fitted, just plug it in there and you're away. So simple, so easy. So a two cell LiPo pack will work in there. It's probably the simplest upgrade, but it's not the one I'd recommend because uh, LiPos mm, don't like them much. Now, if you look at the connectors on the LIFE options, well, you're pretty stuffed really. It's got this little tiny one here. That's not gonna go in your Tyrannus. It's got a three wire or three cell balance lead. That's not gonna plug in your Tyrannus. And even the 1500, which has a far wider range of options, it has a servo type connector. That's not gonna plug in. And it has this little small one here. That's not gonna plug in. And again, the three cell balance lead, that's not gonna plug in. So the LIFE batteries, you're gonna to have to do some soldering if you want them to 
work with your Tyrannus, not a lot of soldering, just soldering up a wire to either convert from this to the two cell balance, or two cell balance lead connector or from one of these if you can find a matching connector. Generally speaking, the easiest way would be to take this wire here, chop it off, and then cut off one of these and solder it on so you end up with that connector there. Paying great care, of course, to connect positive to positive, negative to negative. But even then, I'm not that keen on that because it's got these horrible plastic wires and they, do, they don't flex, they cause a lot of stress on the base there, so it's easy to get a, um, a fracture in your wiring there over time. So what, what I would suggest is that you actually go and pick yourself up a good quality two cell balance lead extender. And this has the right connector and all you can, these are nice flexible silicon covered wires. So then you can cut these out, ignore the center wire, cut that off and solder that onto there. Or you could make up an adapter if you wanted to. So those are the options, but you know, which is it gonna be? As I've said, I like LIFE, but there is a reason you might want to use LiPo. And that depends on what you're going to put in the module bay of your Tyrannus, or if you're going to run long range UHF. Now, as you can see, there's a module bay in there. There's nothing in it, in the standard Tyrannus, but let's say you wanted to fit in an old 72 megahertz module, and you can do it. You can do it on the Tyrannus. You could put a 72 meg module in there and use long wire. You might be FPV. -er. Now, the long wire modules generally need more voltage than the LIFE, LIFE will put out. Well, LIFE will work, but they'll work better with a LiPo because more voltage means more power. That's one option. If you also, if you've got a long range UHF module you want to put in there, quite often some of those require more than, certainly more than a two cell LiPo will put out. And they'll work better on a three cell LiPo than a three cell LIFE. Ah, but having said that, if you're going to run a, an external um, UHF module, sometimes it's better to have an external three cell battery for that so that it powers itself. Yeah, that's a choice you have to make. So there you go. Those are just some of the options, most of the options really, for your Tyrannus repowering. And what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to use the Zippy 1800 because that's going to give me heaps of flying time. It's going to be a safe option. It's not going to turn my transmitter into an incendiary device if something goes wrong. And I'm simply going to uh, cut this lead off and solder on just join the two wires to that balance lead there, extender, and then I can plug it straight into my Tyrannus and away I go. Of course, the other thing you've got to remember, and it's really worth remembering, is you have to charge this. So if I just change this for a, change this connector here for a balance lead type connector, I've got no way to plug this into my charger. So what I will probably do is I'll put a little, um, join another connector on here and put in a servo type connector like this. It would be easy with this battery because I could put my, two cell balance connector on this lead and then I can still plug this into my charger to charge plug this into the balance port on the charger to balance because when you this should always be balance charged every time do a balance charge on them so this is going to be easy this one I'm going to have to add another wire just fork this out so I have one going off to a receiver type or a JST or whatever that I can plug into my charger then plug my balance lead in charge it up and you know that makes it much easier you can't charge a lipo effectively we well, can't charge a lipo through the built-in charge adapter there because this has a charger built into it that only works with nickel metal hydride batteries so if you put a lipo in there and you plug something in there probably is you're going to start a fire eventually something will go bang flames will come out so don't do it don't do it that's uh, something to be aware of always charge your, your lithium batteries uh, through a proper lithium battery charger on LIFE, LIFE setting for these or lipo setting for those simple as that so I hope you've picked up a few tips there and you've decided what you're going to repower your Tyrannus with. Or maybe you'll just stick with this battery if you just have short flights and you don't need to do much flying in a day and you're prepared to charge it every time you use it. And remember that the port here on the Tyrannus, don't connect this up to your smart charger. It's, it's got a built-in charge circuitry. If you plug this into your Tenergy XL or AccuCell 6 or something and set it onto NIMH, Bad things can happen because the two charging circuits will fight each other. You know, the charger, your external charger will be trying to push more current in, this will be trying to reduce it down, so who knows what will happen. You do, all you need to power it is a dumb 12 volt DC wall wart, you plug in there with a the matching connector, the right size hole for the pin, and the little LED here will go on, it'll go off when the battery's fully charged, simple as that. So yeah, if you haven't got a charger, have a hunt around, almost everyone's got one of those little wall warts, 12 volt wall wart you can plug in there, and that will give you your uh, you're charging for your Tyrannus with only with the nickel metal battery. There you go, happy charging folks. Now one thing of course you have to remember, it's very very important, the standard nickel metal hydride battery 
is 7.2 volts. But if you're going to replace it with a lithium battery, like the lithium iron phosphate, it's going to be 9.9 .9 volts. And if you're going to replace it with a LiPo, it's either going to be 11.1 .1 or it's going to be 7.4. So you have to change the the voltage at which the radio will alarm when the battery is going down. Now, to do that, you come up to the main menu of your FreeSky, you hold down the menu button and it comes up to the radio setup menu. And as you can see, if we step down through here, we have battery meter range here. So we can change the range of voltages that will be displayed on the radio to suit the battery we're using. And we can also keep going down until we get to the alarm voltage. Here we go, alarms and that's battery low there, seven volts this is set to at the moment. So obviously, if we're going to be dealing with a different battery chemistry, different number of cells, we need to change that. And for example, in the case of a LiPo battery, let's say we're doing a two volt LiPo, then 3.3 volts per cell might be a handy minimum to use. So that would be 6.6 .6 volts would be the alarm. Currently it's set to seven volts. So we'd go in and change that to 6.6 .6 for a two cell LiPo. Three cell LiPo, 9.9 .9 volts would be a useful alarm level. With the LIFEs, now they are, um, they have a much shallower battery discharge curve. I'm not sure, I'll have to look it up. Look in the description, I'll put the best voltage to set your three cell LIFE to for an alarm. Because also this setting depends on how much advanced notice you want. If you set it too high, you won't be using the full capacity of your battery. If you set it too low, you may find that you don't have enough time left once the alarm sounds for you to land safely before the transmitter shuts down and you've got no control at all. So as I say, I'll fill out some of that information in the description so you get a better idea of what to set things to, but that's how you would do it. And then when you've done it, you just press exit of course, and exit again takes you back to the main screen of the Tyrannus. And for those who've been asking, yes, I'm going to do a full series of how to set up, how to configure your Tyrannus for various bits and pieces. There's some good manuals online, there's already some really good videos, but I'll just give my take on some of the basics and some of the advanced features that people, some, a lot of people don't even know are there. So stay tuned, they'll be coming up in the next few weeks. So I'm going to spend a lot of time with the Tyrannus on the bench and also the external removable antenna option is something people have requested a lot. So we'll be looking at that as well. Coming up soon on RC Model Reviews.